only avoidable, or not, not necessarily avoidable, but um, I have a theory that Dirk knew about this the whole time. I think Dirk knew about this the whole time. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some background knowledge that was happening. That it it makes a lot of things clearer because if you haven't been really tapped in, it probably went over your head. Okay, so just let me play a little bit of this. This, this is talking about the indictment and also kind of alleges a couple of things as well. Here we go. Once he died, just come outside and go to war about him. He say, no, I'm thinking he let a hog got him. He say, no, I say, let's go to war about it. Where he go? Is, is you better know the morgue got him. In an unreleased track with the unofficial title, Beverly Hills, Lil Durk reveals details about the entire hit. He mentions bounty hunters providing ski masks and firearms and explains how they used Uber tags on their vehicle to avoid drawing suspicion from both the police and their targets. He even rapped, pop in traffic, we and Cali ride through Beverly Hills with choppers. In the song, Threats to Everybody, Lil Durk rapped, ain't no sneaky war, money makes them killers, pop outside who you ain't seen before. This line is a clear reference to two members from TBG Lil 4 Mob being on the hit. A surprising twist occurred after the Chicago members were arrested. Lil Durk immediately booked two flights, one to Switzerland and another to Dubai. He then arranged a private flight to Italy, but was apprehended in Miami before he could board. As if the situation wasn't already bad for Lil Durk, this makes it even worse. The FBI definitely knows what he was trying to do. And as if this wasn't enough, an individual, who I won't mention by name since he's not confirmed to be the snitch, a once close friend of Lil Durk, is speculated to be an informant for the FBI. Even though it's pretty much confirmed by members, it has not been revealed by the FBI in the documents. A couple of years ago, in 2022 if I remember correctly, he was released after 12 years in prison for attempted murder. Durk took care of him and his family during the entire time, and once he was released, he gave him 50k. This individual, once deeply embedded in their inner circle, is now rumored to be an undercover informant. If it's him, Dirk is in big trouble since this individual has been connected to all of them. Dirk, Zoo, Booka, Taytown, Lamron, the entire OTF, and the affiliated gangs around them. I'll leave this rumor here without further speculation, as there's really no evidence to support it. It began when the individual changed his Instagram name and started dissing BBG, the rivals of MTV079, of which he's a member. BBG is also the original set of OTF Booney Mo. Additionally, the rumored informant was arrested on a gun charge last year, and during his incarceration, his child's mother was killed. Her family has alleged OTF's involvement. Regardless, the truth will likely surface soon. Until then, I won't speculate further, as if this person isn't the informant, these rumors have put him in a very dangerous situation. Dee Dee, confirmed to have been involved in the hit and likely seated in the white BMW, is a high-ranking member of Taytown with a reputation for past violence. In 2014, he was arrested and charged with the murder of Travis from Shields. But after being released on a $90,000 bond paid by Lil Durk in 2019, he eventually beat the case in 2023, which also included an attempted murder charge. The FBI is reportedly aware of Durk's tight relation with him. Durk has referenced Dee Dee in his music multiple times calling him the threat, and even collaborated with him on the track Block Is Hot, where Dirk rapped, they were scared scared, that's what Threat said, they want peace treaty, I reject that, likely alluding to the ongoing conflict with Quando Rondo. In an unreleased Lil Dirk song with the unofficial title Go, featuring Dee Dee and Lil Varney, he rapped, drillers call me to get shit approved, I never heard of dude, only time I heard was on the news, and Varney rapped, they think shot sweet, they hear that switch, just know my boys just up the score. Dee Dee was allegedly in control of the second OTF business card, which he used to purchase airline tickets for travel. Mm -hmm. 
Brown Eyes and Flacca, who were two of the arrested and confirmed to have been on the hit, are members from up north in Chicago, more precisely TBG Lil 4 Mob. They have been arrested multiple times before in Chicago for various crimes. I don't think they have any direct connection to Lil Dirk, but rather that they had contact with Dady and someone else from Lamron, Taytown, or OTF. Mm. It did say Dede recruited these guys, so, so I, I, I guess, huh, interesting. Brown Eyes is even followed by Dayday on Instagram. Brown Eyes and Flacco were the two shooters and were most likely brought in just to do the dirty work. They were caught on surveillance cameras from the gas station, killing Lil Pab and shooting at the black Cadillac. An interesting fact is that TBG Lil Four Mob were allegedly the set. Yeah, remember I said. <clears throat> so if if those two were the other were the shooters, the other shooter is co-conspirator two. I said that co-conspirator two is the one that's snitching on Dirk. So the third shooter, whoever that is, is co-conspirator two. They won't name him. We think he's telling, and um, that's who we think is telling on Dirk. But clearly, these guys. They were recruited by Didi, so they probably don't even know nothing about Dirk. That, that killed young Pappy from TFG PBG in May 2015. Vani has been with OTF for a long time and is mostly known for making sure that King Von did not get scammed in the Icebox video on YouTube. Mm, I've never seen that. So Vani's in that video? King Von. Hey, 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 with all due respect, and I like like Icebox, I'm not trying to hate on hate on y'all um y'all business. But sincerely, 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 a message to all rappers. First of all, again, I'm not trying to hate on Icebox. And I get it, it's a very pristine place that rappers go to get jewelry. Icebox Films, okay? I know a lot of y'all like to bring your shooters and ice them out. Don't bring your shooters to Icebox to ice them out, okay? Go alone with someone that's going to pay, the, pay the, the, the people whatever jewelry you need. But when you're bringing your shooters to Icebox or they're recording you, you know, as they recorded Vaughn saying, yo, I need a I need a chain for him. Yeah, he be killing shit. I need a chain for him. Yeah, that's not a good look. Again, not hating on them. They do great content. Look, four million from the Vaughn thing. This like this. It's like three different times. Actually, four different times. Do y'all thing. But maybe stop bringing your killers to Icebox. Okay. My boy, the icebox is booked out for me. I mean, it's icy as hell. By the way, if you don't know, the the icebox guy, according to Trench News, was subpoenaed to testify in federal court in the O Block Six case. So all them chains that that they got when it was like, now let's get this for these guys. The guy who made the chain, and again, but they're civilians, I would imagine. Icebox, they got subpoenaed, and they. Pretty much as I say, yeah, you, you, if, if they got subpoenaed where they had to testify, I'm pretty sure they subpoenaed any other surveillance footage that wasn't caught on this big ass camera right here. So maybe if, if, if y'all went in the corner and be like, yeah, oh yeah, he killed this nigga for me. So, um, oh yeah, we got, they probably got that footage too. So again, bring in your killers in front of mad cameras for an internet episode. Also, while I'm even at it. And I'll say it again, this affects me. That's only I want to show you that I'm not hating on Icebox. I've seen this recent trend. A couple of times I want to interview some niggas, and they say, nah, act. Let's do it in the bigger studio. I say, why? Why, why are we doing the bigger studio? Because I want all my goons on camera. What, what you mean all your goons on camera? I want them to see them. Okay. I'm going to oblige. You could put all your killers in the back. That's not me telling on you. That's you now. You know we finna go viral. You're now putting out a video with a million views and you're going to be like, yeah, shout out, to, shout out to Tim Tim. You know, he lays shit down. You're setting your niggas up to go to jail. If you got people committing murders for you, don't bring them to your interviews. 
Don't bring him to the recorded jewelry box pickup. Go hang with them in the hood and tell niggas to put their phones away. You and the killers should probably not be on live all the time. If you want to claim reasonably that you don't know them that well. Oh, I don't know that nigga. What? Also rapping about them. He laid shit down. You got to put a little bit of cap in the rap. Maybe the real niggas who laid down, make up a name or not make up a name. Rap by somebody else. Anyway. You're the only one cashing out on the COVID, man. Only one cashing out on the COVID. That is That's the money. It's actually the same type of earring, but it's just... So, um, you rather just do and the then they, they offered us a deal, they offered us three different deals, but we didn't like none of them, but none of them were That's amazing deals. Look at the child crazy. Uh, you know what? This is, this is what I want. You yeah, don't pull it over. Look at the back. No, how much? Are look you at the back. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's Vonnie right there. That's Vonnie. Ooh, okay. So, so, that's another thing too. And shout out to Vonnie for this. When you are new to money. You don't really know how jewelry costs. And let me tell you this. For every artist out there that's watching me, I know there's a bunch watching me because it's happened to me. When I first went to buy jewelry, sometimes you try to bring a man's because he bought jewelry before. So you're hoping. Here's the thing. Your man's bringing you here because the jeweler going to give him a discount off of his shit. The whole jewelry game is low-key kind of be like a scam. So anyway, here's the point of it all. A part of you getting finessed, because this has happened to me too. That's why I don't like strip clubs that much. Because until you're in the game long enough where it's so abundantly clear that you got bread, usually when you're new to bread, you're trying to spend more bread to convince people you got bread. So when they tell you a price 10 to 20,000 too high, if you're like, oh man, I can't do that. You look broke. <laughs> it look like you don't belong. So sometimes you'd be like, nah, I got that, I got it, I got it. They're overcharging you though. Niggas is overcharging you. Shit, I remember nigga told me a price. I was just like, like, if I try to, if I tell him I nah, I can't do that, he, he might look at me like I'm broke. Right? <laughs> Cause they butter you up. Yo, you getting all this money, man. Yo, damn, man, you ain't got nothing yet. Alright, we're gonna get you right with your first piece. I remember holding up the first cube and I said, How much this is? Say, this is 70,000. I got it. I got it. I got it. Got it? I'm pointing to my man. Yeah, the backpack. Yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> my broke ass. Here my broke ass. You know how I try to do it? So my first cube, it was seven. I said, I said, I said, I said, nah, I want more though. Like, like, nah, we could do a deal if we get. So I'm trying to really ask a discount type shit. But I'm doing it in a way where it don't make me look broke. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm going to cop like two to three things. You could give me a deal on if I cop three. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we got you. We got you. So basically, by the time I did it, I think I spent a hundred. It was like, all right, no, nah, no, nah, we'll give you, no, nah, we're going to just work. That, that's 60, right? That's all right, bet, 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 bet. I got the brace. That's all right, bet, bet, bet. Man, that shit probably cost 30 grand. Like, let's get, like, that chain that nigga told me, Santa K, is probably 30 grand, nigga. I got it upstairs. I ain't going to get that shit appraised. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. Yo, chat, I went to my, yo, real talk, and I know I'm sidestepping a little bit, but I, but y'all know what you get from an stream. Yo, I went to my, I went to, I popped out at Rutgers University. Um, I went there for college, if you didn't know. I popped out to the homecoming and I ain't wear no jewelry, I think. Did I wear jewelry? No, no, no. Maybe I wore, I wore my small cube and that, that shit cost me, how much a small cube? I think that cost me like 25 or 30. And he, they claimed they gave me a discount, whatever, cool. I wore that and I wore the card, my card a year and a bracelet. And when I went there, like, mad people like, oh, act here. Like, yo, just going crazy, whatever. I was like, whatever, whatever. And I'm dapping some niggas up and taking pictures with them. I'm looking at them. They, that's why I hate about jewelry. I got on some, I got on real shit, but maybe they that rich because I don't know these niggas. Everybody got a Cuban on. <laughs> everybody got a Cuban on now. And I'm, I'm starting to think, does everybody really got like 70 fucking thousand dollars to spend? So I ain't going to lie to you, chat. Like, I'm probably either done wearing my, my shit or I'm just like, I'm not going to sell it. Now. I'm just going to leave it, bro. Like, I'm tired of this shit, bro. Because the fake shit, the Mosinite niggas is killing the game. A nigga coming with Mosinite, like, I'm dapping up a nigga. I'm like, yo, does this nigga even have a job? Niggas is popping out with Mosinite. They look just like your shit to the, uh, the naked eye. Look, the Mosinite shit look just like your shit. So if you bought this to look rich or flex, the nigga who bought the Mosinite 
looks exactly like you. So now I'm like, what the fuck? The Mosinite thing is just going crazy. So now I'm like, God damn it. So imagine me wearing my shit. I'm risking, because I'm thinking, when anytime I wear my, my jewelry, I'm thinking I got $100,000 on me. Niggas might try to, I gotta, I gotta even move a certain way. These niggas got probably 800 bucks on them. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So like, bro, why'd you spend $100,000 for? No fucking reason. Because you're trying to look different, but then all the nigga got the most and I, and they look just like you to the naked eye. <laughs> all right, they might not be famous, but like, so, so now I realize me showing up and people say, oh, that's act. That's bigger than what I'm wearing. So, I don't know. Um, I, I was actually Googling. I'm like, is there a new type of shit that niggas ain't bootleg yet <laughs> that could show that my jewelry is out of this world? And Vlad told me, Vlad showed me this shit, which was low key. Vlad was like, because Vlad has a Richard Mill. He has a Richard Mill. It's a quarter million dollars. And he showed it to me. And I'm like, yeah, I think this iced out bullshit is done. I, I think I just, I'm going to just get like, like a rare, you know, them little weird ass watches, but they're rare, but there's no diamonds on them. And you'd be like, oh yeah, that's 300,000. I'm like, all right, maybe that's the flex now because everybody got moles tonight. Anyway, I, I just went on a whole little uh, rant or a little sidetrack. But yeah, these days you can't tell, man. You can't tell. But this is the reason why I went to that story because everybody who just gets money, a jeweler has finessed. They tell you they're giving you a deal. They're like, nah, just tag me on the gram. Nah, not took 10 bands off it. Just tag me on the gram. You know what I mean? Or the jeweler be like, nah, I just want to make a video saying you cop from me and you my client. <laughs> You're like, all right. He'd be like, nah, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm, yo, you can't do eight. Like, nah, I'll do for 70 as long as, um, yeah, just, we'll just make a video. Just tag me on the gram. You done gave him mad free promo. He got 15 other clients. You 15 other celebrity clients. And then like probably a hundred regular people. And he took off $10,000 that it really didn't even cost. <laughs> the shit cost 40. He's selling it to you for 80. He said, do a promo video for me. I give you for 70. Yo, stupid ass still paid 30,000 over the price. This is a finesse. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> anyway, I said all I had to say. First time, I don't know if this is the first time, but he shows up to go get jewelry. And um, I guess Va Vonnie is there to kind of make sure he don't get scammed. Let's play it. She's like, man, you know what? This is this is what I want. You know, yeah, pull it over hundred quarter. You know, see, my mom got a Camaro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. she wanna, yeah, yeah. That's why I just had to pay it off. I told her to trade in and get a new one, but she, you know, with my Camaro. See, chat. I'm telling you, this is this is when you just finally got some money. When you talk to people, you're dying to let them know I'm rich now. I'm rich now. Nah, nah. Yeah, my mom got a Camaro. Nah, I told her to trade it in, paid off. He's qualifying himself. Because he thinks that these jewelers only deal with super rich people and that he's trying to qualify himself to them to say, oh, no, I'm rich now, too. Now, I told yeah, my mom got a bullshit car. I told her to get a better one. You know what I mean? You're going to see it. I mean, it's a little too, like a little too double and a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we got, she got grandkids and all types. So, why you want a little Camaro? Nah, I just let her keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, man. Dog, you came a long way. You came a long way, man, for real. So, that means you're giving us the watch for how much? However you look at it. Yeah. Now, he's smart. This is where they finesse the fuck out of you. <laughs> this is where they rob you blind. <laughs> so you just give us the watch for five then, and then you yeah, just keep the earrings. Know, we don't I, want the earrings. Yeah, no. That makes sense, don't it? <laughs> now, this nigga mad right here. He's like, why the hell is you telling this? Vaughn came here to give us all of his cash. <laughs> you know the videos I love the best? Uh, I got to show you this video. <laughs> and the salute is Johnny Dang. I'm not hating on none of y'all jewelers. Keep, keep getting y'all money. You know what I mean? There's a video. There's a video I think he put up. I think it's with a, it's with a, um, what do you got? We call the guy name again. Oh, it's with Funny Mike. Yeah, shout out to Funny Mike. You know, Funny Mike getting that bag. Uh, and Funny Mike go there and they make a video where it's like he gets some shiny shit and Funny Mike get all the money. No, no, no. Funny might get the, the shiny shit and Johnny Dan get all the money. It should be looking hilarious. Watch this. Look. My birthday, what you say? Too easy. Too fucking easy. easy. Come yeah. on, man. Come see what's going on, baby. Look at this. Yeah. Big boy birthday, man. You know, you know what's funny? Like, they, these look good. They look amazing. 
But the funniest part of it is always when they're handing the money over. Like, the niggas flexing with your money, and you're flexing with, like, these diamonds that we don't really know. Like, I was listening to, like, I think CJ So Cool go off on a rant. Like, he's been going through some shit. He said, yo, he said, I spent a million dollars on jewelry, and I never knew what a fucking carrot cost. I didn't know nothing about jewelry. I would go to the jeweler. I would say, I want the biggest and the best. They would tell me some shit, and I would just pay whatever they told me. I didn't know that, number one, they were using reduced quality and all that type of stuff. I only found out when it was time to sell it back because I was going through some shit, and I said, damn. That's all of us black people. Let's keep it a beat. Mm -hmm. yeah, Wait, how much? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me get that bag. Yeah. Oh, look, look, look. It's showing this. Look, look. Yeah, look, look. Let me get that hey, bag right here. Most of the time. He Let me get that bag, the man. Credit card. Let's see what time it is. Oh, and I got some more blues in my pocket. Oh, no, no. Don't sleep. Yeah. Turn oh. me up, big fan. Oh, oh, oh. Pull like this. The jeweler, he not that impressed with this. You know what he impressed with? Cold, hard cash. <laughs> Yo, cold hard cash. The jeweler's impressed with the cold hard cash. We 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 impressed with anything that sparkles. Ooh. It's too. Hey, come on. Too easy. <laughs> Look, this is all you gotta see. Shout out to John Dang. No, I'm not hating on you. I love you, John Dang. I met you by, by the way. You're dope. He flexed it with the money. You flex it with your teeth. <laughs> this is good. Hey, don't call me. Don't. <laughs> unless you got the blues. <laughs> Look, the jeweler saying, don't call me unless you got the blues. And the nigga, I guess he said, don't call me unless you got the teeth shiner. I don't know. Shout out to Funny Mike, though. That's my guy. I know you're going to call me. I, I want that Funny Mike. This is big money, my grill. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you won't call for that Funny Mike shit, but that's big money. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Too fucking easy. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's too big yeah. fast. Yeah. Yo, I, I I I went in to go get my jewelry. That nigga got this. Nigga got a vault of hell. The the nigga safe. Nigga look like even if you stole the safe, you'll never get in. <laughs> I'm like, where they put the money at? You nigga, you'll never get in, nigga. Anyway, all right. Anyway, so okay, so we're back to this video. This is OTF Vonnie. And he's telling King Vaughn, he's trying to make a deal for him. And by the way, that's W Homeboy for that. Trying to make a deal for him. Because right now, he's gassed up off. He might just got a big deal, just got big payment. Somebody wired him a million dollars. And now he's just looking to spend. And, you you know, when you feel like you're trying to put yourself off as a million dollar nigga, say something called 70000 You're not going to, like, you know, you're not going to be like, um, you're not going to be like, Oh no, nah, I'll only pay six. Yo, I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, chat. Oh, this is oh, this is good. This is actually good. This is actually good. This is actually good. Yo, chat. All right, I'm gonna tell you some dumb shit. I'm gonna tell you some dumb shit. I can tell you some dumb shit. I'm gonna tell you some dumb shit because I'm saying this not to shame nobody. I'm telling you this how this how us black people really it works. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Remember, I told you I won a million dollars in gambling. Well, really, you know, I've lost millions. So, so like, I had a good day. I won like a million dollars. Usually, I win a couple hundred thousand or I lose a couple hundred thousand. And essentially. I had a million, and then I lost a bunch. And when I was about to lose, I'm like, yo, there's no way I could lose a fucking million dollars gambling. So I stopped myself, and I called my dealer up, and I bought the Maybach, right? So I bought the Maybach, and yeah, I'm paying for it cash. Cool. Anyway, he's just, I never seen the Maybach before I bought it. I just like, he, he texts me pictures. I'm like, I want that one. Give me that one. Okay, cool. So he sends me the picture of the Maybach. I'm like, all right, yeah, I want that one. By the way, which I didn't even know that was that popular because Young Miami got one, Yachty got one. I didn't even know this is that popular. Anyway, so whatever. Um, he's like, all right, bet, whatever, whatever. Um, so then, like, at the point where your dealer is hitting you up like that, they're not sending you prices, my nigga. I mean, you could obviously find it. You could go on the website and find the car, but he just sends it to me. So he tells me a price. I can't remember what the, what the price was. I think the price was like, which by the way, I put it I put it incorrectly in my car vlog because the car cost two fifty. It wasn't, yeah, something like that. Anyway, here's the point. The car was, I forgot the exact price. Maybe it was like two sixty. 
And I got a shout out to my mans. I actually play Fortnite with them all the time in Discord. And um, my man Dab is a white dude. You know, white people be on that shit. Us niggas, we really be, we be trying to qualify so much that we got money. We'll overpay, bro. White people, they're always like, no matter, because they don't care about wearing wealth and showing, like, they, they do, they usually, unless they're on some nigga shit. Anyway, so they give me a, so the dude says, all right, so is this, the guy knows how I deal with my buy all my cars cash. All right, let's say it was 260. I don't, I don't want to quote it directly, but let's say it was 260. I said, all right, bet. 260, cool. So I'm talking to this guy, and he says to me, he's, a, he's like, yo, me being, you know, I bought my first car, which is, I still have my first car. It's a, it's a 2010 Mazda 3. And after that, I've never had a used car. And I bought that car in 2010, but it was used. It was an enterprise car that people turned back in. But ever since then, I've just always bought new cars. I'm thinking at a certain price, like, if I'm buying Lambos, supercars, and Maybachs, they don't haggle with prices. Like, you don't walk in and be like, let me get that Bugatti, but not $3 million. Let me get it for 2.8. So, my stupid ass is just like, whatever you say the car costs, because I want a car, I, I got it. The dude tells me, he's like, and I'm just going to throw a number. I'm, he's like, yo, he's like, Ack, wait, you're going to pay that? Like, they're not giving you no deal? I'm like, Deal, nigga, it's Maybach, nigga, the fuck? He's like, Ack, I'll make a bet with you. That dealer you're doing it with will give you a fucking deal. I'm like, no, they won't. It's a fucking Maybach. So he says, tell the dealer, because the guys text me anytime new cars come in, like the, the expensive one. He says, tell him you can't do 260 You could pay 250 today. I said, bro, he's not going to do that. It's a fucking Maybach. He said, just do it. If I'm wrong, my bad. I do it. I text the guy. I said, I'll pay two fifty, not two sixty. The dude came back. No, he's like, oh, I gotta talk to my um general manager, or whatever. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, it was just like, all right, two fifty, you got it. You're getting it today. I'm like, wait, yo, you could actually haggle with a price over. Like again, I know. I thought it was only. This is my stupid ass. I thought it was only for cars that's not that expensive, because these type of cars they don't market. It's either you got it or you don't. It was just like, no, it's still buying a car, bro. Like, you could definitely take off 20, 30 grand, which I learned to think of too. Because me, whatever they told me, I was just paying. Like the Lambo, the Lambo was like 295. I was like, all right, 295, here it is. It was like 295 and 600 bucks, 616 bucks. And they got went to the bank and just wired it. Could have probably told him, nah, nigga, I got 270 or 260 for you. And let's go through some negotiation. My audio is going in and out. <clears throat> anyway, I'm good. Let me know if it's good or it's cracking. <clears throat> so what's it? Fix your mic, nigga. Am I good? Mic check, mic check, mic check. I'm good now. I'm good. Okay, I think I should be good. Okay. So essentially, I found out. That not because you're buying really expensive things. And and, and 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 it wasn't their fault. It's my fault. I'm going under the assumption I got to show y'all that I'm rich. By the way, here's a qualifier thing too. You know why I never had a car loan? This, I, this is why I never had a car loan. In, I've, no, no, after my very first car. So when I started getting YouTube money, this is, this is how long I've been doing this shit. 10 years ago, I wanted to go get a Mercedes. My credit was like... I got evicted from a place because one of uh, the two people I was living with, they stopped paying me, right? Or they stopped paying their, their share of the rent. My name was on the thing. We got evicted because I was either going to have to pay for all three of us or nothing at all. So anyway, we got evicted. My credit's fucked. I'm getting money. It's 2014. I want to buy a Benz. I go into the Benz dealership. I try to go buy a Benz. They look at me and they said, okay, all right. Like I pick out the Benz and I'm like, this is great. Like I sit in it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to finally own a Benz. Remember, my only car still is a Mazda 3, 2010. I said, all right, good. Yeah, I want this. Now I'm, I'm feeling myself too because I say, yo, I want people to feel like I want. Yo, is, is my app still fucking up? My mic, I mean? If it's. Yeah, I think you got to re refresh your, um, just refresh. 
Refresh the stream. Yeah, no, it, it it looks fine on what I'm what I'm doing. Mic is good, bro. I'm telling you, the mic is good. I, I would be able to see it dropping out. Yeah, I, I think it's the stream. Just refresh the stream, chat. Just refresh the stream. I'm sorry. Okay. So I go in, I sit in this car, I like it, I find the one I want. The car was about like fifty, sixty thousand dollars, right? I'm like, I want this one, right? We go to sit down and do it. And I knew my credit wasn't the best, but I didn't know it was this bad. It's like 500, right? Now, the way how these car dealerships work is that if you've never owned a car, like they actually, they do a point system. With, like you have a car rate, you have a car score rate. I never knew this, right? Basically, your trustworthiness for that dealership and also how many other cars you've had of that brand. So it's my very first car I'm trying to get. I think it was a C-Class. What's the C-Class? I can't remember. And fifty, sixty thousand dollars. I sit down with a person. It's it's definitely on y'all end. I sit down with a person, and they're trying to figure it out. And they said, "All right, the credit report came back. It's not that good." And I said, "Oh fuck!" I said, "What can we do?" Yeah, I think it's YouTube acting. I think YouTube is acting acting up. Is is, is everybody on Twitch okay? Okay, so they checked my credit. They wouldn't give me a car. I even showed my bank account. I think at the time, I don't know. I think maybe I had like $100,000 in my bank. And, and I was just showing them I could afford this car like twice. Like, what do you mean you're not giving me the car? Like, come on. Like, I want, I want the car. I think I was trying to maybe even lease it. I was, I was trying to lease it because, you know, tax purposes. And I was like, no, I could finance it if I need to. They turned me down. They turned me down. And um, after then, I remember I grinded, and two years later, in 2016, I went back to that same dealership, and not same dealership, it was Mercedes, and I bought a G wagon. It was like 170 thousand, and I bought it. And I remember after, no, I built it because I was sitting with the guy. They're like, "Oh, you got this internal," and and then and I felt like I felt like they were testing me. So we get to the point of payment, and it says, so how are you going to pay it? You want to do the credit application again? And it was almost like I felt like people were just laughing at me. And my ass said to them, I'm paying for it cash. It felt like the the, the movie with uh, DMX when he came and they threw the bag of money, right? Which I got to learn later. It don't work like that in real life. You don't come and throw in a bag of money when you're buying a $170,000 car. No, nigga, you're going to wire that bitch. And... um. Yeah, and then even then, I remember when I got the car at the time, there was a whole problem with like Nigerians stealing cars. So they they wouldn't it, they had a thirty day hold on issuing the title because um, they couldn't issue the title uh, because people were sending those cars immediately to Africa, and there was a whole like title fraud. I don't know. What, anyway, here's the point. That. Me trying to prove myself got me into that mindset. A young black guy who just started making some money, I felt I had to, when when I was turned down, I had to show I did have the money. Now, subsequently, I ended up buying everything with cash. House cash, three other cars cash. But still, I never really utilized credit. I mean, nowadays I am because I'm, I'm starting to leverage things. But... It goes into this conversation with with with, with Vaughn. I, I get why you need some homie. Now, granted, I don't know if this guy has business sense or not, but the dude is there trying to help Vaughn, right? Like, yo, bro, yo, you can get a deal from these guys, dog. Like, yo, dog, yo, this fucking earring cost what? Nigga, stop playing, bro. Like, yo, give Vaughn a deal, nigga. Like, what, what are you doing? You know, so he's trying to work the deal. You'll notice Vaughn is being quiet. Earrings. We don't want the earrings. That makes sense, don't it? <laughs> I'm gonna take a shot and do like that. It's the same. So, how much you tell me? Dude, I can't do that now. Look, <laughs> Look at Bonnie. Five then, and then you no, just keep I the earrings. We don't want the earrings. No. That makes sense, don't it? I'm gonna take a shot and do like that. It's the same. So, how much you tell me the earrings for? Those are, look at the back. No, how much? Are you at the back. Okay, the back. The back says 600. Okay. So that means you're giving me for 5,500. Like I said. Yes, and plus tax. Come on, you know coming out of quarantine like that. Dude said tax? What the fuck? 
Man, if a jeweler tell you taxes, cap, man. All they be doing, especially when you pay it in cash, you think a jeweler who gets $20,000 from you in cash reports to the IRS they got $20,000? First of all, the jewelry that you bought for $20,000 really cost ten. So you know what they're going to say? Oh, we got fourteen. That's an appropriate markup. Fourteen. So the six K is fucking, you know. Now, granted, you know, the bigger you get, it's harder to do uh, because, you know, the government is going to easily see that you're scamming off the top. Right. Like every now and then you see like some some fucking Chinese spot who who all cash transactions, they don't, resp they don't report at all. They get caught up in some shit. Hey, how much you say you want for this one? Seven? I can sell for 80, no trade. 70 cash? No. Wire transfer? No. Uh, yeah, because it's you, you see that? The dude said I could sell it for 80,000 no trades. This, is, this tells you everything you need to know about the business of, um, the, the business of jewelry. The guy says wire transfer. And he says, nah, I can't do that. What? What do you mean? 70 cash? No. Wire transfer. Oh, no, never mind. He's saying, he's saying, he's saying 70 K for the cash. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, because in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. Now this dude knows he's on camera. Von don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> These are investments. Except, <clears throat> y'all gonna give you another story. Yeah, I'm gonna give you another story. I'm, I'm just putting y'all on game. I know there's YouTubers and even young rappers who watch me, so I won't put everybody on game. This should be no fucking secret. That's what I'm telling y'all. All this about investment shit. Man, when you go to one of these jewelers respectfully in hip hop, if they a plain Jane Cartier costs more than the iced out Cartier. By the time these jewelers take the product that costs a lot and put a bunch of diamonds that cost a little bit around it, the initial value of the product depreciates, right? So anyway, I was in a jeweler. I was at a jeweler's spot. Um, it, it was a it was a birthday for my girl at the time, and um, I remember when we were there at the jewelry spot before. I was thinking about oh earrings, and they were they gave me a price on some earrings, right? And it looks big, like it was some shit that looks big, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. So here's what I'm thinking because I'm thinking all jewelry's made the same, but this is what happens when your aftermarket jewelry uh, a jeweler versus. The jeweler that worked for like, here's the story. So I remember I didn't buy it at the time. All right, I said, okay. Her birthday comes around. I said, all right, you know what? Well, let me go get her some earrings. It'll be some dope shit. Let's go do it. Now, the jeweler I'll be fucking with is in New York. I want to go to New York. Like, yo, let's go to some local shit. Like, damn, I don't really know no local jewelers. You know what I did? I said, ah, let me go to Tiffany. Well, they sell jewelry. It's the same shit. Bruh. The jewel, the jeweler that was going to cop in New York. And it was about the same size shit. That nigga was like, yeah, it's like 10K, whatever. And I'm like, so I'm already thinking. I'm like, I could drop 10K for that. You know what I mean? Nah, nah, nah I mean, I could. You no, know, she going to be extra. Like, when she's sucking that joint, like, it's going to. Like, I said, so I'm like, it's going to be like 10K. Gang. Could you tell me? I walked in Tiffany. First of all, you should know everybody's in suits. Everybody, but I'm thinking I'm in there on some. Like, I got it. Let's do it, man. So, ain't no prices nowhere that you can see. I couldn't see a price to save my life. I'm looking around. Ain't no prices. So I just pick. I said, "What size you want, baby?" I'm like, "Like, how much is she?" I said, "Let me get that one and that one right there. That one and that one." Or no, no. And let's let's see both of them. She put both in her ears. I'm like, all right, cool. What you like better? You tell them. Because the person there, like, everybody's in the suit. Even the woman's in the suit. I'm like, what the fuck? So you tell her which one you like. She told me, whatever. Again, they're both the same size. Don't matter. I said, I bet. Let's do that. <laughs> Yo, Jack. Yo, Jack. I said, let's do that. So cool. So now I'm trying to figure out the play away, the smooth way of asking the price. Because this is Tiffany's. But I walk in with my Cuban. I got my watch. I got my bracelet. Remember, my whole jewelry kit is like 100 bands. So I'm in a bit. 
So I'm like, man, I'm looking at my shit all shot. I said, man, give me them pussy ass motherfucking earrings. We ain't Tiffany's though. All right, this is a, oh, great choice. You know, they always say some, some compliment, great choice. Like, these are to die for. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm thinking this bitch better die sucking my dick when she get these. Come on, we got this. Bruh. They told me them two pussy ass piece of earrings cost $38,000. Nigga, my heart jumped from here to here. Now my bitch ass is here saying, well, I look fucking, because I told him, I said, nice it's her birthday. You know, I had to cop, I got a cop or something nice. Now, here's the thing I'm going to keep saying about these hip hop jewelers. They're not selling you what Tiffany's is selling you. That's a fact. That's a fact. They're not selling you what Tiffany's is selling you. Nigga, it said 38,000. Bruv, I'm trying not to play broke. And I, of course I got it, but it's just like, nigga, I didn't think I'm paying that for no fucking earrings. I'm thinking about that. I'm like, yo, my mama used to be a school teacher. That's my mom's whole year. Earrings, especially, I don't care about jewelry like that. I'm like, so now, and we had this conversation afterwards. So now I'm like, nigga, I'm looking at her like, I'm looking at her to say, bitch, you better not say you really want these. So I asked the question to not make me seem broke, but to put it in her decision. I said, I said, oh, 38? Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I. So I look at her and I said, I said, how bad you really want these? Nigga, the look on my face was, you know that SpongeBob meme? You know the sponge? The dehydrated joint? I look at her like this. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> you better not say you want these shits real bad. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> but I couldn't say it because I'd be the broke ass nigga that fucked up and walked in here because I pulled her in there. <laughs> so now I'm she's taking a while god damn it what the fuck so now I'm starting to I can't be broke so I'm starting to throw some shit in the air think of what you could get with 38 you know I could you know it's up to you it's up to you but just think of what else and I think she start realizing the hint of yeah, this broke ass nigga ain't trying to pay for this shit. <laughs> broke ass nigga ain't trying to pay for this shit, man. <laughs> Yo, she was just like, and she gave me the out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it a B. She gave me the out. She was like, um, um, you yeah, know, I like him, but, but, but you know, like, I'm, I'm not in love with him like that. Um, we could go look around. Could you hold these? And I was like, oh, nigga, I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> I'm straight, nigga. I look like what's the nigga name? I look like this nigga. This me right here, gay. I'm looking like him. This me. <laughs> this me. When she said that, nigga, I probably exited that shit, nigga. <laughs> So let me ask a question to any jeweler out there. Um, y'all could take this tracks or whoever. Why the fuck when I go to y'all store, y'all could show a nice pair of, of earrings and it'd be like, hey, these earrings cost like five or ten thousand. And I go to the the Tiffany store. It's a reason why they got commercials on TV. And that same size earring costs thirty eight thousand dollars. What the fuck are you selling and what the fuck are they selling? That's the question. That's when I knew I'm done with jewelry. <laughs> Nigga, what? Anyway, let's get back to this. We need to be at 30 right now. Okay? Yeah, we, need to, we need to change the earring. 30 got, right now. Got, Come on. By the way, here's another thing. The nice lady in the suit that was selling this to us and the gentleman, they weren't into, I could tell. They weren't into haggling. I could, like, it was almost like when they was watching me. First of all, I walked in with a backpack. It was almost like, oh, broke. It's, it's like, it's like, it's like, oh, it's 
security be on high alert. Broke. They're here. Oh, the broke ones. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm qualifying myself to show I got bread. But they looking at me like, oh, he's gonna ask for a discount. He wants to haggle. Oh my God. It's a haggler. It's a haggler. Calm down. Jesus Christ. Two and a half carat each one. Man, 30,000 right now. That's it. That's all we got. I got a full We wouldn't even be able to touch that. Uh, we can put him in four prong mounting if you don't like the three prong mounting. 30,000. Yeah, three. You won't be able to get anywhere near there. Like three. anywhere at all. Dang. Yeah, yeah, that's my, my, look, I know, that's my, 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 my grandma name. Yeah, she just passed away. Yeah, I got to give him a credit. Oh, oh, yeah, I know what's going on. Yeah. Okay, what color is gold? Yeah, I know. I know how it goes. What's going to be nice to win? Oh, no. Like Alex she ain't got none. Chat, I went on a Tiffany store afterwards, gang. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can find the, the shit that they, they try to sell me, bro. Bro, nigga, I used to see, I used to see, uh, uh, you know, they'd be like, yo, get your ring with Zales. I'm like, all right, Zales. Nigga, I went to Tiffany and Co. Nigga, let me see if I can find what the fuck that, earrings, nigga. Let me see if we can find it in this bitch. Nah, nigga, it was a big ass rock, nigga. <laughs> it was none of this, nigga. It was just a diamond. <laughs> See if I can find this shit, man. Man, I, I don't know. And by the way, it wasn't like some extra special shit. Like, it, it, if if you just wanted the big rock, like it just costs tens of thousands of. It was like twenty plus. You know what I mean? We're not talking about some bullshit like this. Like, nigga, it was just a big ass diamond. You know what I mean? Not, not like this, man. This is out of collector. I'm trying to find that Tiffany. It's just diamonds. What? It was something like this, bro. It was something like this. Solid tier. Yeah, nah, this gotta be fake. Maybe they sell fake shit too. I don't know if they sell fake shit. The shit they told me was $38,000. And I remember the guy says, and I was just like, I'm, uh, um, I, I was speechless. I, I'm, yeah, I don't know if I can find all this bitch. Like, I'll even tell you where I went. I ain't trying to dox where I be going, but I'll tell you. Actually, I won't say that because y'all niggas going to be weird. I'm going to call, did academics really come over there and try to get it? Broke ass thing. <laughs> I don't know. But something like that, man. You, you see, the thing with diamonds, to me, like, if it was third, like, I don't know how big this is in real life. Or know, I, know if I know this is real diamonds. But if it was this big, bro, 1300 bucks, let's go. But he told me $38,000. Like, what the fuck is this? Let me see if I could sort by, like, price or something like that. They probably could spot me coming from a mile away. And actually, I really don't even think. Uh, how do I sort by price? Diamonds. I want to sort by price. Oh, price. Here we go. 5000 and over. Let's look at that. Let's see how that shit's hitting for. Nah, nah. I could put up. Nah. Let's do price minimum 20000 Okay. Oh, well, let's do that. Yeah, it was no shit like that. Look at this, fifteen thousand. All right, I was down to spend ten. I was down to spend ten. I ain't gonna hold you. See, when you up in the store with your girlfriend like that, you thinking about all the time she done clean, cook, sucked you off. Like you think about all good shit. Like you know what? All right, man, you leave me alone. You don't, you don't bitch and argue. Like you good. This this is like an installment for you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it like that. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> That's during the good times. That's during the good times. That's during the good times. <laughs> Until you realize you give her a piece of jewelry, she still sh won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> I can't find that shit. How much is this shit? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this shit right here. Look at this shit. Right here. And to me, this little bullshit. Where is it at? It just popped up. 
30, yeah, some like, yeah. Look at this, 31,000. Nigga, you know, you know what been looking popping to me recently? Elon Musk robot for the house. Elon Musk creating some robot that could be in the house. It's going to cost twenty to 30000 They won't ever talk. They'll shut the fuck up. One of these joints. If, Tesla's gear. Nigga, yo, chat, yo, chat. Before before I cop a chick $30,000 worth of shit, yo, Elon just, for all y'all chicks who, who full of mouth thinking y'all Krishan Rock ratchet, y'all act bad, trust me, before I buy one of y'all a motherfucking thing, more than $20,000, I'm copping these. The one that gonna do my laundry, clean my house, and shut the fuck up. Without needing to hire a teacher. Right here. Comes to engineering design. What? Oh, the reverse bend over? Oh, this shit's crazy. Yeah, Elon, you fucked the game up, man. These Yo, y'all hoes better come with better skills. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I'm saying hoes respectfully. Yo, yo, I'm copping three of these. I already, I already said it. When these drop, I'm copping three of these. Three of these. They're gonna do my laundry, clean my house, and shut the fuck up. This doesn't change the whole game. Yes, I'm gonna have a robot girlfriend. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And I'm sorry, yo, y'all women got something to compete with. I'm going to tell you why. I know I went off the topic. We're going to get back to, to Dirk, but come on. We chilling for a couple hours. I'm going to tell y'all why y'all got something to compete with now. Because if sucking dick and riding cock is the only thing you offer, well, there's bitches doing that for 200 bucks. So if you think that you cooking, cleaning, vacuuming <laughs> is... <laughs> Is some priceless shit. Well, Elon Musk just captured everything you do non-sexual in one robot. And you might be out of business. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. The human essence when developing Optimus. From the get-go, Tesla designed Optimus to embody a human-like nature. Standing at 5 foot 10 and with an optimized weight of just 138 pounds this makes for a robot that's not too heavy or bulky even in the smaller homes yo chat i promise you i'm getting three of these i promise you i'm getting three of these and it can't talk back no one's gonna want a noisy robot constantly i don't want a noisy chick <laughs> making sounds while it performs tasks so from the start tesla the only thing hey put it like this Y'all women better step up y'all game. Real talk. Because I think the robot made is qu is easier and closer to replacing the woman than the robot. Constantly making. Than the robot robot dog. Sounds wild. Yeah. Uh the robot dog ain't there yet. I got to be able to pet you sometime, chill with you. You be the homie. Like, like your dog, at least my dog, provides me mental peace. No arguments. Me and my dog never argue about shit. So to keep it real, the robot that be around the crib as a human is ahead of the dog game, man. The dog is, listen, I don't got to tell Pluto to be like, yo, bro, I'm about to get a robot. If you keep acting up, nah, Pluto's good. But y'all females <laughs> who think that you just a bad bitch who suck dick and know how to fuck, but because you can do laundry, just please know, Elon is designing something to get y'all out the paint. And whenever he gets y'all out the paint, I'm pre-ordering three of these. I never pre-ordered a Cybertruck, but three of these? <laughs> y'all gonna be like, damn, nigga, you gonna see them walking back and forth in the background? All right, sit down right now. Just, just chill over there and um, just fix me another glass of Hennessy and motherfucking cranberry while I get the content going on and they going to chill and mind a fucking business. This is the billion dollar idea. I wish I could invest. Actually, I'm an investor in, in Tesla. This is great. I ain't going to lie to y'all, man. Y'all females got to step it up. <laughs> step it up. Elon done came out with the ultimate. He got y'all mapped to a science. <laughs> I'm just keeping it a being with you, okay? <laughs> all right. All right. Anyway, let's get back to Vaughn. Let's 
Bussing. That's the thing. I my it's the light, light man. Is, look at these lights. Take it out the light. Go crazy. Take it out. The light, bro. Well, my mom walked out. I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not good. Nah, Vonnie really was trying to talk him down. Approve the zero dollar transaction. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 uh, I want the. I want that. Uh, yeah. I don't watch no more. Which one? The road. Okay. So we got the pump top of this. I ain't gonna lie, I think they was trying to finesse one. I ain't gonna lie. Oh. Los Angeles, with two unidentified individuals, as well as Flacca and Brown Eyes. During this encounter, Vani was seen handing over multiple firearms, including one that had been modified to function as an automatic machine gun. Vani was, according to the documents, the driver of the white BMW that followed the black Cadillac Escalade for hours. He was the one that gave the other car the location of Quando Rondo and his entourage the entire time. OTF Boogie is from 072, and he was the driver of the white Infinity that pulled up to the gas station. He parked the vehicle so that Brown Eyes and Flacca, who were sitting behind him, could jump out and start shooting. Boogie has been affiliated with OTF for a long time and was very close to Lil Durk's brother, D Thang. The internet has probably had a big part in all of this. Not long after King Von's murder, fans got impatient and wanted OTF to retaliate, and fans of NBA Youngboy started trolling Lil Durk with Slide 4 Von comments. It was everywhere. Lil Durk could barely post on Instagram without his comment section being filled with Youngboy fans trolling him. It obviously bothered Durk as he even rap- By the way, I've seen some people th say that Dirk got tricked out of his position by young boy fans saying slide for Vaughn and 6ix9ine, who also was echoing the same. Do you think that's true or nah? Hmm. Rapped about it in songs and even talked about it in an interview with DJ Academics. The internet definitely played a part in all of this. However, I think it has had very little influence when it comes to the determination to get back for King Von. I think Dirk immediately put out a bounty on Quando Rondo and people around him, even before the Slide for Von comments started to appear. However, over time, I think it actually got to Dirk, especially when they didn't get revenge. Year after year went by, and the fact is that the two actually involved in the murder of King Von are still alive. And now Dirk is locked up, recently transferred to the feds, and will soon be transferred to California. The moneymaker is gone, and it will affect many members and family, and could actually be the end of OTF and Lil Durk's entire career. Who's this? Lamar Lil Steve? I hate the internet because it's all fake love like Chicago. The whole Chicago don't want nobody to be great with shit. All you have is hate in your heart, and hate on everybody who's making a living for themselves. Like, how if you having a, a job that's motion, if you doing whatever that bringing a dollar, and at the end of the day, motion, stop fucking hating and being lazy. This goes for goofy ass niggas and bitches. Free the bigger picture. Another interesting aspect in all of this is Lil Durk's recent efforts to reshape his public image. He has presented himself as more religious, established foundations to support vulnerable communities, and promoted a message of peace, although this appears inconsistent with his actions. At his last concert, he even displayed a billboard collage featuring deceased Chicago gang members, including both friends and rivals, and brought Jay Main from Jarrow City on stage. This seems like a move to deflect FBI attention, as it's evident that Dirk remains connected to crime. Recently, he also received two keys to the village of Broadview, but they were swiftly rescinded following his arrest. He likely received this honor due to his significant financial support for Mayor Brandon Johnson's campaign, having donated over $150,000. As we know, politics often operates on exchanges of favors, which may explain. So here's here's I ain't gonna lie, the mayor kept it pretty diplomatic about his thoughts about um, Dirk. What's important to know is that let me see here, um, Mayor Johnson. So apparently, 
You could you could search. Mm, let me see. So apparently Dirk was like one of the biggest donors of the mayor, right? Like he gave like apparently one hundred fifty thousand dollars. See if we can find it, Dirk. Yeah. And by the way, this is July 26th. They, they, they actually put this out. The Chicago mayor who has raised nearly $2.6 million since his election in April 2023, nearly half of those funds come from unions. Another large check was from Grammy, Grammy win, winning um, um, rapper Lil Dirk. Wow. That's interesting. So Dirk, give me, give me a second. Let me see if I can find. Since one of the mayoral seat, he was his he seen has seen a name outside of Chicago's usually political world crop up as his biggest financial backer, little Dirk. Chat, I have a theory that Dirk knew about this the whole time. Dirk was trying to be smarter than a lot of other people. He was starting to. I don't think he thought the feds were going to come. I believe that he was going to, um, I believe he thought maybe being in, involved in politics and, and kind of back in, you might gotta remember a lot, a long time that Chicago, uh, Chicago hated on Keith was because of the mayor, the mayor, remember Rahm Emanuel. He always said that Dirk, uh, like Keith was like one of the epitomes of violence and just like evil. He never, he always shut down any shows or never really co-signed Keith being accepted until long after, until pretty much it was in, it was in um, L.A. Dirk starts supporting the mayor, donates $150,000. By the way, if you look at, uh, there's a list. Let me see if I could uh, figure out the list. There's a list that shows all of his donators. Dirk is one of the biggest donators uh, Mayor Johnson, Chicago. We just put list of list of donations. Contribution. Oh yeah, hey, this might be it. Let's see if we can find it. This might show the total one. This might show the total donations, but not necessarily break it down. Let's see. Uh, contributions by candidates. Could we sort? I don't know if we can sort by amounts. <clears throat> Let's sort by amounts. Okay. Oh, never mind. The, the teachers union, 1.2 million. These companies and also teachers, 60,000. A lot of teachers. I don't know a lot. And then let's see. This is the Board of Elections. Okay. 160,000, right? Here we go. Can we find Dirk? Yeah, right here. So Dirk donated this to the Voice Torin LLC, 150,000. He donated this on 623. 2023. Now, by the way, <clears throat> if you ever watch The Wire, if y'all ever watch The Wire, having some political favor is always good. When you involve in the streets and you start getting big time, even if you're a drug dealer, you want to be somebody who is on the good side of the politicians because the politicians give the directions. Like when they say, yo, why is crime up over there? They're going to put the police commissioner on it to go investigate it who's then going to come up with charges or come up with an investigation. So you kind of want to be in their good favor where they look stupid, right? They look stupid to, uh, to um, go investigate essentially somebody who gave them money. Okay. So you see the voice touring. Okay. Get all that. Give 150,000. And why he was awarded the keys in the first place. So if we're going by this, I think Dirk for the last year, now I'm not saying he's not sincere, but, but, but I do believe that he's been making the steps and the efforts to try to clean some stuff up, if you ask me. 
you can't name another rapper who donates 150000 to their mayoral election from their local hometown. My own thought- Shout out to VA, VA in the building, what up with y'all? Thoughts on this are that the whole situation is so incredibly unnecessary. A small fight which happened due to arrogance and pettiness has now led to multiple people killed, injured, families destroyed, True. and now is perhaps Chicago's biggest rapper of all time locked up in the feds, and there is a big possibility that he will receive a life sentence. This will affect a lot of people, not least his own family, his kids, and India. I can't believe Lil Durk put himself in this situation. I've always thought he moves smart, but his problem is that he's too afraid to leave his homies behind. However, it's no surprise really. Lil Durk has actually always been deep in the streets and never really left it. Over the years, he's been putting out bounties on people, supplying his block with guns, cars, and whatnot. We who follow the Chicago scene closely knew that this was only a matter of time. And Lil Durk also knew that as in several songs that he knows the FBI is after him. In the song Red Man, Lil Durk even rapped, they asked me where I'ma be in 10 years, shit, I said, the feds. So this was just a matter of when, just like with G Herbo and his gang, who will most likely end up in the feds in the near future for shooter shells, KTS Dre, and Free Band Bobo. I really hate- Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. This thing is just throw some shit into the mix? Guns, cars, and whatnot. We who follow the Chicago scene closely knew that this was only a matter of time. And Lil Durk also knew that as in several songs that he knows the FBI is after him. In the song Red Man, Lil Durk even rapped, they asked me where I'ma be in 10 years, shit, I said, the feds. So this was just a matter of when, just like with G Herbo and his gang, who will most likely end up in the feds in the near future for shooter shells, KTS Dre, and free band Bobo. I really hate to see Lil Durk in this situation. He has been my favorite artist and many others for years, before his late break, and he has meant a lot to the Chicago drill scene. Wait, hold on. Somebody said, how y'all say Dirk dumb? He got too, money, too much money to do this stuff and that. But if you ain't shit, but if shit ain't happen, he a bitch and ain't do nothing for Vaughn. Y'all be crazy. I hate when we let the internet control the streets and street politics. Lil Varney says, stop calling my phone asking me shit. I don't know shit. And y'all see, and I see all you niggas post my brother. Majority of y'all happy and be sneak dissing him. Now y'all acting like y'all hurt. Please stop the faking. Stay out of family business and I go for all you blogs also. This is, this is D, DQ showing the old block chain off. Free the guys that need to be free. And duty low with, with him a picture to say the goat. Channel Mafia? I don't know what that is. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe. Yeah, go, go show some love to my man Chicago scene, man. It's my boy. Mmm. Goddamn interesting. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Now, here's the thing. We got we got a little bit more. So, uh, shout out to my man Bradford Cohen, who actually went on Law and Crime. Another and, rapper, federal. And he spoke about pretty much what the government has on Dirk, and he's pretty much talking about what's necessary. Now, we've given our opinion. He's an actually reputed lawyer. He's dealt with Fed cases a lot. He's going to give give us his opinion. He did it on Law and Crime. Shout out to them. Now, what we said is that this case is heavily dependent on a snitch because there's nothing that really ties. Again, not, none of this stuff looks good for Dirk. I'm not going to say it looks good, but it's heavily dependent on somebody who's cooperating, who's going to corroborate the fact that Dirk did in fact put a hit on somebody and did in fact somehow indirectly or through a third party pay these guys for the death um, and the commission of the murder um or, or or the attempted murder on Quando Rondo but the death of Lil Pop. So here we're gonna have Bradford Cohen break it down. He gives us some in interesting information. Let me go take a picture real quick and refill my cup. <clears throat> Into the show, Bradford Cohen to talk more about this. Bradford, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. We have another 
rap star taken into custody on some pretty serious charges, very different than the Sean Combs case, which we've been talking so much about. Just what are your initial thoughts on the indictment, the affidavit, these initial documents, and the initial allegations uh, alleged by prosecutors? So I think that when we look at the indictment itself, what's so interesting is, you know, and this happens quite often, they don't put all and everything that they have in the indictment because they don't have to, right? Either less is more for uh, an assistant U.S. attorney or the U.S. attorney's office. And in this case, I think that's what they did. They gave them enough to know that they know what's going on, but not enough to know everything that's going on. I think obviously there's been some rumors that there's been a snitch among his group that have been that has been wearing a wire for some time. And if that's the case, it's going to be a very difficult case for everyone involved, depending on how much talking there was going on. What I thought was interesting with the indictment is, uh, you know, a lot of things around Dirk basically revolve around funding that he paid for air airport, he paid for uh, um, flights, he paid for hotels, he paid for car rentals, all these things that they utilized in this, um, you know, quote unquote, murder for hire plot. So that's really where they're mm -hmm. tying him in right now. But I think there's going to be more to come. And I think that uh, there's going to be individuals that either will flip or that have already flipped or there's going to be someone very uh, close. I, I heard what he said the last part. You, you know what's going to be interesting, Chat? So usually what we see like in drug cases or whatever is that, um. by the way, this is Diet Coke. And, um, what am I drinking? I think it's Smirnoff. This is some cheap shit. I don't know. Um, what was going to be interesting is this, Chat. Well... In drug cases, when, you know, the, the money, because it's gotten through illicit means, gets frozen, will they try to affect Dirk's funds? Now, that could drastically change how this turns out. If Dirk essentially can't use, you know, I think Dirk at one point claimed that, you know, I don't know, he made hundreds of millions, right? Now, does he have hundreds of millions? I would be very shocked if Dirk has hundreds of millions. I would imagine he has tens of millions at his disposal. Um, obviously then he has investments that, you know, if it comes down to it, same with Diddy, you have to liquidate or you have to just whatever, just to get access to those funds. Cause your money's going to be your best tool here. If they kind of come up with either Rico that turns his money against him in a way where they feel that a forfeiture should be able to freeze it. For example, you know, him getting money through music would be non-illicit ways, which means, yo, he got it legally. But if they put together this argument to say, well, he was committing these crimes, allegedly, and these crimes that he was committing became the fodder and the promotion for the music, right? And that the, the success of the music, I think that's a really hard thing to prove, but that the success of the music wouldn't have been so if he wasn't doing all this crime, it, they could possibly try to freeze some shit. I don't think it will happen, but this is an angle because currently, you know, to Bradford Cohen's point, they're pinning, um, they're pointing out Dirk as the money man, money man, money man, money man. And, you know, we could say it came through legal reasons with the, um, or legal means with, with his career. But if his career is about all about, this type of stuff isn't it intermingled we'll, we'll find out later anyway let me let me get back to it close to him that that was wearing a wire uh that would be willing to testify as to his involvement because his involvement right now is kind of tangentially involved right where he's the funder but there's no allegation direct allegation that he said hey this is what i want done there's an allegation that he'd spoken code and he could have said this and all these different things but there's no allegation that says hey this is what he said and this is what was going to happen and, and to be clear when we're talking about this obviously there are multiple people involved you can't have a conspiracy unless there are several people involved especially something like this sure. so although banks might be the most famous of the names that are called out in the indictment there he's not the only one i'm going to list them out in the indictment we have kavan london grant we have deandre dontrell wilson we have keith jones david brian lindsey and asa uh, houston and the indictment also names five co-conspirators, with Banks being one of them. In the indictment, he's referred to by his initials DB or co-conspirator one. 
So here's a little bit of background on this case. And it really starts in 2020 because that is when Banks was with his friend and fellow Chicago Revolution, including the interview of one of witnesses, for example, assault at the direction of banks and to maintain their status in OTF. For example, based on evidence collected during the investigation, including the interview of one of witnesses, I know that banks put a monetary bounty out for an individual with whom banks was feuding named TB. And then there's a footnote at the bottom of that page that reads, Due to serious safety concerns, this affidavit does not provide the identity of these witnesses. Based on the FBI's investigation, I know that witnesses and or their family members have already received threats and or have been contacted in what appears to be attempts to influence their participation in this investigation. What do you make of that, Bradford? So it's basic, you know, like a lot of these allegations, you can almost take each one of these and put them into every case that we've seen as of late, uh, where witnesses are either contacted or witnesses are offered a monetary amount not to testify. And sometimes that comes with uh, a civil case, you know, like if, if there's a civil matter that's outstanding, they might say, hey, listen, there's a civil matter that you could have and we're going to give you a settlement of xyz the feds automatically take that as you're buying off a witness so it it just depends on the facts of those circumstances like i've seen it many times where the feds read into it uh differently than you would if you just read it yourself where in people are be trying to be influenced a friend of a friend might contact you and say like hey listen this isn't a good idea to be a witness in a federal case the feds take that as, oh, hey, this is, you know, Bob Smith influencing this witness because he's friends with this person who's friends with that person. A lot of times that doesn't shake out the way that they put it in the indictment. And they put that in the indictment specifically for bond purposes. Right. So right, when you right. go in for bond, they say, hey, listen, this guy's trying to influence everybody. And here's all these things. But when you actually get into the case, sometimes those things don't shake out. And then it's already too late because you already moved for bond and you didn't get bond. That's the same thing that's happening with Sean Combs. I mean, well, that's Correct. a little different because he's not he's not charged specifically with obstruction, but it's part of the racketeering count. I read this indictment. I didn't see anything that a uh, little Dirk is charged specifically with obstruction or witness tampering. It's more the conspiracy. There's also uh, federal weapons charges. So does that give you pause too that he's not? I mean, again, maybe I'm wrong that he wasn't directly charged with anything like witness tampering, obstruction. Yeah, it always gives me pause. When, whenever the feds throw an indictment in, it gives me pause right away. <laughs> because a lot of times you'll see in the indictment, there's a lot of accusations in the indictment that when you start getting into it and it starts kind of flushing out the facts, they stretch what could be a basic fact, they stretch it into something that it's not. Um, and I've seen this time and time again. So in this case, it could be individuals that are loosely associated with OTF or that is signed to the label or something else that has contacted a witness and they're trying to put whatever they did onto dirt banks. So okay. that's right. the issue right. here, right? Is that they're just glumping them all together. They'll just say, Hey, listen, you know, because this guy did that, obviously Dirk is the quote unquote leader of OTF. He must've known what was going on. Therefore he shouldn't get a bond because this is a dangerous gang and et cetera. You, you notice they stopped short of saying this is a dangerous gang and said this is a dangerous association of individuals that are known as OTF, which I thought was interesting because generally speaking, when it comes to these, any of these um, uh, rap groups, so like, you know, there's OTF and uh, YNW and YSL, and they all say like, hey, all of these nicknames, this is all a gang. And, uh, and, you know, even though it's a record label, it's also a gang. And that's kind of their argument with every single one of these. And that's going to be their argument here. But I thought it was interesting in the indictment, it didn't specifically say gang. It said an association of individuals that go under OTF. I thought that was kind of interesting because I don't know what kind of evidence they have to say OTF is or is not a gang legally, the, the legal definition. I thought it was PTSD from the YSL trial. Let's not uh, rush to call anything a, a gang because of all the yes. trouble there. That's yes. a separate conversation. We can we can have a, a, yes. a sad to say, Lil Dirk has been booked, man. It's gonna be a lot of videos coming out about Lil Dirk, man. This is honestly sad, bro. I'm I'm gonna keep it a being like this is actually 
sad, like genuinely sad. Lil Durk literally had such a, I don't want to say such a promising career because he still has his career right now. He has his album coming out in a month. He, like Lil Durk has so much positive going for him. Like this case for him is how I see if Lil, if King Vaughn was still alive for the FBG duck case, like he would have got booked the same way. And they're going to pin everything on Dirk. There's already snitches. Like what Rex said, there's a murder involved. Murder for hire. <clears throat> they're probably going to come with a RICO case after. This is not state charges. This is federal charges too. So it's very, very, very much different. Man. I seen a, I can't really say what I want to say because, you know, YouTube is very weird, but... <laughs> Seeing Dirk changed his religion recently, they said it's good to be that specific religion while in jail, which I agree. You see a lot of, you feel me, people, that religion, you feel me? It's like a, they're like a group in jail and they stay together, which is good. But man, going from being an eight, probably nine figure man, you know, private jets, you know, mansions, to a cell, man, that must do something to you mentally that you can't even fathom, bro. And Lil Dart, honestly, he's like rap wise, he's like up there, like he's the 21 Savages, whichever tier is the Lil Babies, 21 Savage. You put Lil Dirk right in that tier, like the tier right under the Kendricks, J. Cole's, Drake's, them. He's literally the tear right below them. And, you know, it's sad. Lil Drake's been in the game for so long, man. He told him about Slide for Vaughn. He allegedly really did Slide for Vaughn. Now he's in this situation. All we could do is pray and hope for the best. Um, You know, I am consider myself a realist. And I'm looking at the situation. There's snitches, like. All the evidence, like OTF cards for everything, and bro, like Lil Dirk is the head of all of this. Like, I really just hope he doesn't. If Lil Dirk gets life in prison, that's I know his heart's gonna drop. And how Lil Dirk says that he hates snitches, how much he prides himself on hating snitches. Like, I always wonder to myself if it's someone in Lil Dirk's position, if it's either life in prison or you snitch. And you get five to ten years. Are you snitching? Would you throw your whole life away? You're not going to get to see any of your kids physically grow up anymore. All your money. You have all this money right now. But that money is not. You're the breadwinner, bro. Like five to ten years, 20 years. Who knows? All your the families connected to you might be broke. Like you're the breadwinner, bro. Like It's a crazy world we live in, bro. I genuinely feel bad for Dirk. And, but man, it's hard to even feel bad for Dirk because then you'd have to feel bad for Quando. And it's the whole situation is just sad because it, it's all this literally started from King Vaughn and Jania, bro. King Vaughn, Asian doll, Jania, like it's just woman, bro. Woman caused this whole thing to happen. It was a chain reaction, and now we're here. But it's your boy, Big Acting News. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and Please, 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 please don't. Like, woman holds so much power, bro. Like, it's so crazy. And I'm out.